As Jeff mentioned, my name is Kate, and I'm here to bring you guys on a journey to the wonders of the Middle East, Jordan. And the wonders that I'm going to share of today are of a different lens. The lens is of the Jordanian culture and the prodigious souls that I've met there in Amman, Jordan. So before we begin, I have a question that I want to ask you all. Why do we draw lines in the sand? rather than allowing the wind to blow and blend the lines in the sand to make one unified body. And when I was on this trip, that question just kept puzzling me over and over again. See, the reason I went to Jordan was to teach adults English. I had no idea what to expect, and I learned very quickly that my assumptions and ideas about the Jordanian culture were naive. And I learned that what I was raised to believe about Muslims, because it's a very predominant Muslim culture, was just crumbling in front of me because the truth was staring right in front of me. And what happened when I went there is just an amazing experience I want to share with you all. But first, I just ask that you guys all know that I'm trying to be a sensitive other culture. And I just ask for your grace as I share my experiences. Jordanian culture is so hospitable, it blows you away. One of the experiences we have, we were shopping downtown in Granite. It was 100 degrees out. We've been drinking all the water so you don't have heat stroke, because that's very common. And all of a sudden, there was this huge commotion. And I didn't realize when I was shopping, my friend had passed out due to the heat. And I found out that basically multiple people that were driving in this busy street stopped to ask if they could bring her and her husband to the hospital. And then we had the owners of the stores next to us just stopping what they're doing with their customers. They come to ask us, do you want to come inside? We want you to sit, relax. It's too hot out. And what I witnessed was the, the store owners actually carrying in my friend and putting a fan on her, giving her water. Every aspect was just so caring and hospitable. And it, it just blew me away. And it made me wonder, do people feel welcome in our country and have that experience? And it just opened my eyes to a whole other level of hospitality. Another aspect of the culture that I learned is a very common misconception about how women dress modestly in their culture. So in Muslim culture, especially in Jordan, they wear a hijab, which is a head covering that covers their hair and their neck. And then they'll wear modest clothing that covers their legs, their elbows, and their chest. And what it resembles in their culture is to honor themselves, to honor your family, and honor the community that you're associated with. Because in that, that cultural lens, it's all based on honor and shame, right? And so they have an ad there that really helps you understand the misconceptions between uh, the honor and shame aspect. And what that is, is there's two women. There's one woman from like a Western culture wearing more provocative clothing, although we know, we know not everyone wears provocative clothing, right? And then you have a woman in the Jordanian culture wearing a more traditional Muslim attire with a hijab and modesty being um, indicated. And you see the woman from the Western culture and she's, they show her thoughts and her thoughts are, oh, that poor woman, she's, she's oppressed. She has to cover her body. But then it's funny because you see the Muslim woman looking at the woman with the provocative clothing and thinking, this poor woman, like, why is she being oppressed to show her body? That must bring such shame to herself and her family. And just having this exposure and the insight from the people there, it just gave me this whole understanding that I'm not looking at men as oppressors. I'm not looking at women being oppressed. What I'm really seeing is the woman in front of me smiling and not her hijab. What I'm seeing is men and women, me, women excuse me, men and women in front of me that are just weak. Because before I had the mentality of us versus them. And it just gave this whole understanding of what it really means to have a culture around honoring your family and yourself, but also to honor your community because their whole culture is centered on their community. And one of my favorite experiences in Jordan was teaching English. There was men and women of all ages. And one of the profound moments I had was a gentleman had actually fled from Sudan with his siblings um, to escape the recent genocide in their country, and the rest of his family is still there. But we had asked the question, what do you wish people knew about your country? And his, his response, it jabbed me. And what 
what he said was this. He said, I wish people knew that Sudanese people are good people. My country, the government might be bad, but the people are good. And you could just see him like filled with hurt and sadness, and you could just see the sincerity. And honestly, I started crying because you could just see the struggle that he was going through. And then something beautiful happened. The woman in front of me looked at me with her head tilted, and she goes, you care, like within total disbelief. And then another woman asked if she could give me a hug. And it was, it was just like this beautiful moment of us all coming together and realizing we all have struggles, we all have hardships. And the best part of it too was I got to hear from this gentleman. Two days later, we asked about your biggest dreams. And he said his biggest dream was to help people be happy. And I believe he will succeed. And lastly, the woman that asked to give me a hug, she actually asked for my contact information because she wanted to be lifelong friends. That's what she kept saying. <laughs> and she insisted that she would give me a gift before I left. And understanding the culture of hospitality and that's the way they honor people they love, I couldn't turn it down. And I was supposed to bring the gift, but I forgot it. <laughs> okay, I'll bring it next time. There's this beautiful blue box with a bow on it. And inside it was a purple pendant, a necklace pendant that her grandfather had given her that she insisted that I keep. And I kept telling myself, don't cry, don't cry. Tears may happen, who knows. But it just helped me realize that how hospitable and how generous the people are there. And it just was this overwhelming sense of love that I didn't ex like expect that I would experience. And I learned that my limited understandings helped me actually want to be more hospitable to other cultures. And it helped me understand that we are more connected than we, under than we realize. And lastly, it made me believe, or try to understand the question, why do we draw the lines in the sand? Well, I believe it's just this lack of understanding of other people. I think it's afraid of being vulnerable that we might be wrong or they might be right. But regardless, I hope that we all can be challenged by our beliefs and our ideas to be the student, to be vulnerable, because if we did, we would realize that we would experience love. Because people are people everywhere you go. Thank you.